Good morning. I'm Steve at Rogers Gardens, and uh, we're right in the middle of summer now. This is being early June. I shouldn't say the middle of summer, but the, really the beginning of summer. But anyway, we're starting to see a lot of the summer annuals, a lot of the summer flowers blooming. And today I'd like to talk about um, uh, dahlias. That's actually our flower of the week here at Rogers Gardens. Um, dahlias are, are wonderful plants for the summertime. They'll bloom all summer long. You can get them at the nursery starting now. There are several ways you can actually plant the dahlias, um, but um, let, me, let me just give you a little background information on them first. Uh, dahlias are actually from uh, are native to Mexico, the, the higher elevations of Mexico, down through Central America. And um, there, are, there are about 40 species, but there have only been two species that have really been used to produce all these wonderful uh, assortment of dahlias that we have today. Uh, the original ones were look something like this. this is actually a little bit more double. There were single flowers, small red flowers, Dahlia coccinea, and there's another species with a single flower uh, that is sort of a mauve color flower, and they were both small single flowers. And it's hard to believe that um, now, uh, after about 200 years of hybridizing, there have been over 50,000 registered varieties of dahlias, whole range of colors, shapes, forms different sizes, uh, so there's a whole lot to choose from now for the, for the gardener. Um, they range in size from these, these are, these are called bedding dahlias, they stay fairly small, they make it a, eventually get about a foot tall, 10 to 12 inches tall. They're used in, in gardens, usually in mass displays, and uh, they range um, up to these larger ones. Some of these are called dinner plate dahlias, One's large ones like this, uh, they're called dinner plate dahlias because they typically can be the size of a dinner plate, which is 10 to 12 inches across. So they've really done a lot of work on the hybridizing now. And as you can see, the, the color range is really something else. Uh, this is just a small variety of the different types um, that are available. Uh, I've been growing dahlias since I was a kid. I've always been fascinated by them and I still do. I grew up in the uh, colder part of the country in uh, New York and uh, lived in Pennsylvania before moving out to California a little, about 20 years ago. But um, the nice thing about them, they'll grow just about anywhere in the country, except maybe in the, 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 the real hot deserts or um, very, very cold areas. But even uh, up far north, down south, they really are, are quite adaptable. Um, most people wait to buy them at this time of year when they're in bloom, they actually see the flowers. But a lot of times garden centers will sell the tuberous roots. They're actually clumps. Um, they usually look, look about like this. You get them, they start coming into the garden centers, even in colder climates, usually January, February, March is when you'll find the biggest selection of these roots. They usually come in packages with a nice colored picture on to see what you're getting. So this is the first, uh, this is the first time you can actually get your dahlias. You can also order from specialists online if you're looking for certain varieties. Um, there's one up in the Pacific Northwest that has in their catalog this year, they had about 350 varieties you could choose from. But um, a lot of people wait till they're actually in bloom. You can actually see what you're getting here. So uh, at Rogers Gardens, we have a, quite, a, quite a selection right now, a really prime time for planting these when they're in bloom. They, um, um, so let, let's, let's talk a little bit about culture, how you grow these. Um, as I said, if you're in, if you're uh, even in California, you can start planting these. You usually, usually want to plant them about the time you plant your tomatoes, which in California here is usually about early to mid-March. Of course, if you're in a colder region, you want to wait till the weather warms up. Usually, when the ground temperature reaches about 60 degrees, is a good time to plant them. So, um, um, in, uh, I, I sometimes will plant mine. My, if I'm doing these tubers, I'll start these usually about in April. I'll put these in the ground, but you can do it up to now. We're getting a little bit late for in California. We're getting right at the end of the season if you want to start with, with these roots here. But uh, you can plant these all summer long, the ones in pots that are blooming and growing. Um, if you are starting from these, there's certain things you have to um, decide before you plant them. The first is location. Dahlias like full sun to, to, to at least a half day sun. They do best in a full sun area, but uh, as long as you're getting a half day of sun, you'll get good bloom all summer long through the fall. Uh, another thing to consider is the soil type. They like a well-drained soil, um, one that doesn't stay really soggy wet all the time. So um, most garden soils are adaptable. They're, they're somewhat adaptable, but if you do have a really heavy soil, I've even added sand. I've had a couple of spots in my yard that are heavy, heavy clay soil. 
And so I've actually added a coarse sand uh, along with different kinds of organic matter. Uh, I like something called Harvest Supreme, but uh, it may not be available all over the country, but any good compost is good to add to the soil. I just do that as a matter of course before I'm planting any of my dahlias or most other things for that matter. Um, once you get that soil nice, you know, white, well drained, lots of organic matter in there, I usually add an all purpose organic fertilizer. Uh, dahlias like a fertilizer that's typically a little bit lower in nitrogen. Uh, remember, in fertilizers, there are three numbers on the package. They all fertilizers are required to label this. Uh, it stands for nitrogen, potassium, and uh, phosphorus. Uh, or it's the other way around: nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So usually, the nitrogen, that first number, you want to be a little bit lower. Although I've used a, just an all-purpose one with numbers roughly equal. I've had have good success with that. Um, so I usually mix some of that in before planting either the plants or those roots. Um, you may want to consider staking them. Uh, if, I'm planting the, if I'm planting these roots and I know it's going to be a big variety, I usually actually put the stake in the ground first because the problem is once you get these in the ground, you know, if you, if you put these with these big fleshy tuberous roots, if you try to put a stake in afterwards, a lot of times you're going to damage these roots. So very often I'll actually, you know, prepare my soil, put the stake in and then just plant right next to the stake. You can also do it later too, but you just have to be a little bit more careful. Um, as far as watering goes, they like regular water. Dahlias, unfortunately, are not drought tolerant plants. So as long as your soil is well drained, they just like a regular, regular watering. Uh, keep that soil on the moist side. Um, I'll very often add a layer of mulch if I'm growing them in the ground during the summertime. This um, keeps the soil a little bit cooler. It also keeps the moisture in and it also suppresses weeds and, and it looks nice too. So if I have dahlias in, a, um, in one of my, my beds in the front of my house, I usually put a nice layer of mulch over there. Doesn't matter what kind. I like a shredded cedar mulch or a redwood mulch, but you can use cocoa bean shells. There's, um, there's all kinds of different mulches you can use, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, mulch certainly does help in the summertime, especially if you're in a hot, dry climate. Um, you may have to fertilize later in the summer. I usually look at the foliage. If it has nice, nice dark green foliage like this, I usually don't worry too much about it. But if you notice your foliage turning a little bit yellow and you're maybe not just getting a lot of good growth and buds, you may want to add just another dose of fertilizer on the, so on the soil surface and you can um, just water that in. Um, Dahlias can also be grown in pots. In fact, we have some nice ones. Let me just pull this one up here. These are actually grown by Rogers this year. From uh, They started from these, these root sections uh, probably a couple of months ago, I would think. Um, but large pots, I grow quite a few of mine in pots at home. I, my containers are actually larger than this. I have some dahlias that get up to five to six feet tall. I had one last year called Show and Tell that was um, that yeah topped out about six feet by by uh, by the end of the summer. So if you get if you beforehand, if you if you if you're going to grow one of these big varieties, you need a bigger container. If you're just growing some of these small bedding types, obviously you don't need a a real large container like this, but you need to get a container appropriate to the final size of the plant. Um, if you are growing in containers, you want to make sure that you do keep these watered. Again, these containers will dry out a lot faster. Clay pots, if you're in a hot area, uh, you may need to give these a, da a daily watering, a good soaking. Um, feel the soil. If it's getting a little bit dry on the top, um, that, that doesn't always mean that, that you need to water right away. Uh, maybe I, I usually try to stick my finger down in the pot, like about an inch to see. If it's still moist, I don't worry about it. If it's really getting on the dry side, give it a good deep soaking. You'll also have to give it a, a little bit more fertilizer in the containers. Again, as I say, I grow a lot of mine in containers very successfully, but I usually use a water-soluble fertilizer. There's one I like called uh, Sea Grows. It's almost considered organic. It's, it has a lot of you know, seaweed extract and a lot of other natural elements, a lot of trace elements in there. And I usually do that about every, oh, every, about every week and a half to two weeks. I'll give it a, a good shot of the fertilizer. Um, Uh, as far as pests go, the only thing, um, if you're growing these from these roots here, you'll see the, this one's starting to grow here, but once these start going above the soil surface, if you're planting these in the ground, slugs love these. 
So that's one thing to think about. A lot of times I, you know, I forget about it. I plant these, you know, there's nothing visible. And then all of a sudden these shoots will pop up and, and uh, gee, the, I, I, I think the slugs can sniff them out because usually within a day or two, a lot of times my tops are chewed off. Uh, that happened to me this spring, I'd forgotten about it. So use a good slug bait. There's a great organic one, Sluggo which is um, uh, it really is iron phosphate. It's safe to use around pets and kids, so you don't have to worry about that. Some of the other slug baits can be toxic if you eat them. So uh, I usually go with, with a sluggo. It's just a lot safer to use and it's very effective. Usually once the plants get up to some size, I don't worry about it. The slugs usually don't bother them. Um, two other things, two other pests that can trouble dahlias when they are up in Growing, a lot of times you'll see you'll see some aphids that'll come. I mean, aphids affect so many different things, and dahlias are no exception. Uh, you usually find them on the tender new growth around the buds. The, the problem with aphids is that um, they, they can they can transmit virus diseases. So you really want to try to keep those under control. Aphids, fortunately, are fairly easy to control. I use something called takedown spray. It's actually just a, a canola oil and it's a natural insecticide, uh, pyrethrins, which does a very good job. But there are a lot of things on the market that'll, that'll work for uh, soft-bodied insects like aphids. Uh, the takedown spray is just one. Neem oil, some people will use. Any of the oil sprays uh, are also very effective. Um, the only other problem can be spider mites which you may get, especially if you're in a hot, dry area. In Southern California, we tend to have low humidity in the summertime, hot temperatures. So um, sometimes mites can be a problem. I'll first notice that these don't have any mites, but if you did, you'd see a little white stippling on the leaf. Uh, if they get bad enough, you can actually see these webs forming between the, uh, the leaves, which uh, if it gets to that point, it's really pretty serious. But I usually try to uh, keep a lookout for these in midsummer, if, especially if we have some hot, dry weather. Um, mites are a little bit, little bit more difficult to control, but again, one of the oil sprays usually works. Uh, only caution about oil sprays, you don't want to do it on a hot sunny day. I usually do mine very early in the morning, give it a chance to dry before the hot sun comes out, or very late in the afternoon, early evening, when that, uh, when the hot sun has gone down. So um, that usually takes care of the mites. You just have to keep a lookout because you're not going to get every one. So they'll gradually build up again. So if you do have trouble with mites, something you really need to keep a lookout for you know, probably the rest of the summer, as long as you're having you know, some hot, dry weather. Um, let me look at my notes here quickly. Um, I think that's about all for culture. But um, for overwintering, a lot of people, as I say, these are, herba these are herbaceous uh, perennials. They die down to the ground. They'll grow all summer long. Usually about October, or November, they'll start turning yellow and dying down. This is perfectly normal. At that time, you can cut them off at ground level. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna leave them in the ground, um, I'll, um, I'll cut them off. If you're in a colder climate where the ground freezes, you have to dig these up or else just treat them as annuals, you know, plant new ones the next year. But um, in Southern California, um, where it doesn't freeze, I, I actually leave them in the ground. I've had them for several, for years. This is one clump that I dug up last fall. It's been in the ground for about three years. Um, and this is where this, this one actually came from. So this was a huge clump. So this is what can happen if the, if the dahlia is a really vigorous growing variety. Um, the, the problem with this is that if I were to plant this the way it is, there's so many shoots coming up here, it would really get too crowded. So what I like to do, I've already done this ahead of time. I usually cut off a little section here. This is a perfect size for planting. There's actually three, it looks like maybe four shoots coming up. Uh, if, you're, if you're getting these from a specialist, specialist nursery, a lot of times all you'll get is one, one piece that may look like this. Uh, the important thing is that if you're, if you're dividing these, I usually do mine in the uh, in the early spring after some of these shoots have started to, to show. I usually I usually do it actually before this before they're this big. But um, if you store these, if you dig these up over um, you know in the fall time, store them over winter. I usually wait till the springtime when you start seeing new growth. Then you can actually cut these apart. And actually, all you would need. You know, it's a piece like this. There's two shoots on here, but this is some of the these swollen roots here, and this is last year's stem. These buds are coming off the base of last year's stem. So you actually you want to make sure that you actually have at least one of these shoots on this this piece here if you're planting this. 
Um, if, if I were to divide this up, I mean, I, I could probably get about 10, 10 different pieces out of this big clump here, and you can share it with your friends if you want, or sometimes I'll, I'll just toss them away if I, if I don't need that many. Um, I think that's about all I have for, for the culture and everything and growing dahlias, and uh, I thank you for watching. So, um, I, do we have any questions? Yes, thank you, Steve. Should we use mulch in containers too or only in the ground for these? Okay, um, I actually do use mulch in containers also. You don't have to, but, but I found, you with anything in containers, even my tomatoes, I found that the putting a mulch on the soil surface will actually retain that moisture a lot better. So, so mulch really has a use in containers as well as in the ground. Okay. How do you deadhead dahlias? Okay, deadheading. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's important to deadhead. And let me just show here, I don't have a, I normally have a small pair of clippers I use for that. But if you're deadheading, let's say we wanna, we wanna deadhead this one here. If this one's finished, I usually take it down to where you get a side branch. There's a new, see there's a new bud coming on the main stem. So I would just take this and I would usually cut it right down here. Um, some people will just cut it below the flower stem. The, the only thing is, you know, it looks kind of messy after a while. So I like to take it down to where the next bud is. Um, eventually this whole branch will, you know, once these, uh, once these buds open, it probably won't sprout again. So I usually, again, I'll, then I'll take down that whole stem to where I see the next, there's some, there's a leaf here. There's actually some new buds breaking. These will actually develop once this top is cut off and you'll get, you'll continue to get flower buds. So, uh, deadheading is important. Uh, it, it'll actually stimulate the uh, plant to produce more flowers and it looks better too. It's, it doesn't look good to have a whole bunch of dead flowers hanging on your plant. Okay, how do you water and treat, and how do you treat fungus for these? How do I water? Oh, okay, watering, I usually like to give deep waterings. As I say, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, it, especially if you're growing in pots, I, I stick my finger down in the pot just to see how moist it is to get an idea. Uh, if it's in the ground and if you have a mulch, you're probably not going to have to water as often. After a while, you get to know they like an evenly moist soil as much as possible. They really don't like extended dry, dry periods. So um, usually when I do it, I like to give deep waterings less frequently. Um, as far as fungus, the only, uh, I, I assume what you're talking about is powdery mildew, which affects a lot of plants. Sometimes late in the summer, or if the plant's not getting good air circulation, or if it's on the shaded side of a plant, you'll notice um, some of the leaves will start getting this white powdery coating. This is a fungus disease, powdery mildew. Um, if it's not, you know, if, if it's not too bad, I usually don't worry. I may pull off the leaves, but sometimes, um, you know, especially late in the season when the nights are getting longer, it's getting cooler, it's getting damper, powdery mildew can be a problem. Um, there are different sprays you can use. Uh, and, and the nice thing about it, a lot of them are organic sprays. There are good, there's a good choice. A lot of the oil sprays will work. Even things like neem oil will actually uh, actually smother smother it. You have to keep up with it. I like uh, I like a product called Liquicop. It's, it's just a liquid copper spray. Copper is a very good fungicide. I use it on my you can use it on edibles. I use it on my tomatoes all the time for all kinds of diseases. I use it on my roses, and it works uh, it works well on the powdery mildew too. Um, the thing you have to remember is that as you're getting new growth, that uh, this is not protected. It's not a systemic or anything. So you're going to have to keep an eye on it. You may have to spray every week to 10 days if you really have a powdery mildew problem. Anything else? I think that might be it for questions today. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, you can always find us on Instagram and on Facebook and check our YouTube channel. This will be posted later on too. So if you tell your friends about it and we'll do a lot more uh, like this. So, so stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.